It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by The Beat Seat. Jewish passenger is suing JetBlue claiming religious discrimination after he was thrown off a plane following his refusal to sit next to a woman. What? I gotta see what this is. Because you can't, you can't say I'm not gonna sit next to a woman. It's against my religious beliefs to sit next to a woman. If you say that, you gotta get the fuck off the plane. All right? I'm sorry. You bought a, a seat. You didn't buy the entire plane. You didn't buy the wing. You didn't buy both seats, so you didn't have to sit next to anybody. Or you could choose who you sit next to. You bought a single seat. Let's, let's see. An Orthodox Jewish pastor claims he was thrown off a jet blue plane for trying to change seats. Well, that's different. You're trying to change seats is different. Pastor had explained to the staff that he couldn't sit next to a woman due to his... Bril- oh, I guess he can't sit next to a woman. I, why? What's in the religious belief that says you can't sit next to a woman? I want to know. Does anybody know what the Orthodox Jewish belief is that you cannot sit next to a woman? Sounds like the stupidest thing in the world. So when you're a baby, you can't be next to a woman. You can't have a woman sit next to you if you're like a three-year-old. Oh, no, it's only at a certain age you can't sit next to a woman any longer. Bunch of horse crap. All these beliefs are so mental, by the way. Like, oh, well, I can't sit next to a woman. I'm an adult now. Hmm. All right. Orthodox, we know you just can't trust yourself. You're not orthodox enough. Your orthodoxy would prove that you have what it takes to sit next to a woman. (laughs) You think she wants to sit next to you with that reeking armpit? We know. You haven't ever put any deodorant on. You're washing with like baking powder or something. We don't even know what you're doing. I'm feeling your, the curls in my face right now. I'm sitting here trying to just take my flight. I'm trying to take the flight. You're curling out to the floor. Couldn't trim it? No? No trimming, no deodorant, smelling like freaking India. You know? You guys know. You know, sometimes, guys, sometimes when you're in the process, you know, you're in the process. (laughs) She wasn't kosher enough. J.E. knows. She wasn't kosher enough. You know, he, when he got on there, he's like, you don't smell like garbage. I can't sit next to you. You know, that's like his telltale to to know if you're an Orthodox as well. Like when he walks up and if you smell like some disgusting street corner in India, you're good. He's sitting right next to you at that point. He's like, oh, how was synagogue this week? You know, did you have a good time? What did your rabbi talk about? You know, that's where they go. But if he sits down and he sees you smelling like dove, Yeah, I'm sorry. It's against my religious belief to sit next to someone who's cleans themselves. (laughs) You know, like, we can't do that here. You gotta smell like garbage. You know, if you want to reconsider, you know, while the flight does, like, one of those tipsy-turvies, you're in the toilet. You come out smelling like I expect. And now my religious beliefs have been met. And we're, we're doing, we're taking a trip together. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we have here with Magoo. And again, no offense to anybody out there who, if there is something to this, I'm sure there is. I mean, he's not making it up, but it's mental. I'm sorry. You know, you're an adult. So you should be able to sit next to a soul. If you're saying that soul, and again, this guy knows what a woman is. If anybody wants to ask what a woman is, this guy right here knows this orthodox passenger knows what a woman is because he can't sit next to one. Let's see what we get here from this dude. Sue and JetBlue. Let's hear about the discrimination here, claiming he was thrown off the plane. We already got to this this part. Abraham Lunger, you know? What the freaking hell movie was that? He called someone Lunger. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my good Tombstone. Tombstone! Yes! The final scene in Tombstone. It's over my shoulder right now. You're looking at it. And you've got Doc Holliday. And you got the other guy who's supposed to be the greatest shot. And he's trying to take out Doc Holliday down. And he calls him Lunger. You ready, Lunger? And he goes, and then like all of a sudden, Val Kilmer comes out, double decker style, shoots the dude without even trying. He's coughing up blood. Lunger style. Abraham Lunger. That's such a weird side 
Side note. But anyway, Abraham Lunger, an Orthodox Jew, was set to take a red-eye flight from Palm Springs International Airport to JFK on December 31st, 2023. It was at 11.59 that this all happened. Because of his religious beliefs, he can only sit next to a woman if she is a blood relative or his wife. He can only sit next to a blood relative or a wife. Guys, Seven billion people in the world. He can't sit next to any of them. No, I'm sorry. Are you related to the Lungers? Are you a Lunger? You got a Doc Holiday. It. Oh my goodness. So he can't sit next to any of these. He's, he could sit next to six people on planet Earth. That's a, that's a life right there, you know? So let me ask you, how did you get anywhere in this world? How are you getting on any plane if you can't sit next to anybody unless they're in your family? Go buy a private jet. Oh, I'm sorry. The pilot's not part of the family. You're going to have to jump out of the plane mid-flight. I'll handle it. I'm a lunger, you know? The couple weren't assigned seats in advance, according to the lawsuit filed in the U.S. Southern District of New York. His wife asked JetBlue ticket an agent in the gate prior to boarding if lunger could be seated next to either her or a man because of his religious beliefs. I do think that this is actually valid. They, before the flight, she said, can you have my husband sit next to me? Can you have my husband sit next to a dude with donger? We need a donger, not someone without the donger. You know, people say, what is a woman? Someone who doesn't have a donger. Pretty simple. The women are able to make babies. The guys, they're able to make babies. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta understand the science. Anyway, his wife asked JetBlue, and she, I don't know, JetBlue was probably like, nah, we don't care about your religious beliefs. That may have been what happened. They're Mormon. And the Mormons don't believe in, in that orthodoxy. You know, and Mormons believe in a gold tabernacle and Joseph Smith and all these weird cities that were never found in their book. <laughs> but guys, Brigham Young did it, 10 wives. Here we go. Um, Abraham Lunger. So let's see what we got. Anything? Are we, do we have anything here? Lunger took his seat and then he saw that a woman, not related, by the way, no relation, was about to sit next to me. I, I can't, I can't, I can, I notice she smells good. This is not a family member. Could you, excuse me, Jeff, can you put your arm down, sir? <laughs> By Menon. You expect, that's a commercial right there. You see all this going on in the background. You got like, somebody's popping up. Alan Thick. By Menon. And you're like, yeah, speed stick. Let's get it for that guy. <laughs> he quietly got up from his seat and stood in the aisle, arms in the air. Everybody passed out. But before he was able to tell another pastor to change seats, a flight attendant yelled at him and said, Sir, Lunger, sit your butt down, sir. We're about to do our, you know, safety talk here about how to wear your stupid, you know, raft when it, when it, and the mask with the cup. You don't know how to, you don't know how to put the cup over your face with the stupid elastic band that goes behind it. That does a great job suction. It's almost as good as those masks that you guys were wearing. <laughs> you should just take those stupid masks you're wearing and pop a hole in it and then throw the oxygen in that. You got a perfect connection, right? Suction, suction, right? Oh, goodness. She refused to accept the explanation and attempted to prevent Lunger from switching seats with another passenger who had agreed to switch seats. The guy agreed to switch seats and they don't want Lunger to do it? Oh, my goodness. Other passengers who overheard this conversation also offered to swap seats. Multiple seat swappers. JetBlue, what's with you? I'm calling JetBlue in a moment. We're going to get them on the line about this one. The plane's pilot then told Lunger and his tra travel companions, his wife and another woman, that Lunger couldn't change seats because it would cause a weight imbalance. What in the freaking hell is that horse crap? You're on a plane, you're telling me that Lunger, weighing 337 pounds, is going to be a weight disbalance? Come on. I just had to eat. I'm in the airport getting ready for the stupid flight here. <laughs> this is absolutely discrimination. I'd be suing too if I was Lunger. Multiple people were willing to change seats with Lunger. You know? 
couldn't change seats because it would cause a weight imbalance. You, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you booked a flight and it was like, mm, how much do you weigh? They don't ask you how much you weigh on a flight. They don't look at you when you're getting on the flight and they're like, um, sir, you're going to sit over there. Uh, ma'am, you're going to sit over there. We need to have a weight balance on the freaking plane. Bunch of horse crap discrimination right here. Let's see what we have. Lunger never forced other passengers to change seats with him or used a loud or stern voice. He was actually very calm the whole time. He said, excuse me, my name is Lunger, Abraham Lunger. Do you think I could switch seats with somebody? And in fact, there's 19 people back there willing to change seats with me. We're just going to do it. All right. Just wanted to let you know. I'm sorry, what? sir. I'm sorry. No, you can't. Why is that a problem with you? Everybody's cool with it. We're going to go do it. My wife, I can't sit next to anybody if it's a woman, unless it's a family member. Just your family. Huh? Yeah. Three people in the world. But that's what it's, I got, you know? So can you, you know, help an Orthodox man out? This is my religious beliefs we're talking about here. Okay. No women, but my wife or my aunt, <laughs> my mom, you know, cousin Sue. Besides that, I'm at longer is at a loss. And you're longer. Huh? Yeah, no, I speak about myself in the third person. <laughs> Abraham Longer, you know. Longer and his two travel companions were told that they weren't allowed to collect their suitcases and wouldn't be provided with an overnight accommodation, food or transport. What? They were booked in alternative tickets for the next day and had to pay both the price difference and the ticket change charge. Wow. JetBlue is proud. Now, how do we have a JetBlue voice here? JetBlue is proud to serve millions of customers each year from many different backgrounds. We do our best to accommodate our customers' various requests while ensuring all customers are provided the experience they are expecting from JetBlue. The, air, the airline statement said, adding that it could not comment further due to pending litigation. The lawsuit, which accused JetBlue of religious and racial discrimination, seeks compensatory damage, punitive damages, and attorney's fees and costs. It's about three, three-fourths of the costs. It's going to be the attorney's fees. But guys, what do you think about this? Again, I just want to go over the detail. Let's talk about this quickly. <laughs> Orthodox man. Smelling like crap. Gets on the plane. He's there. He's sitting there. His wife is not sitting next to him. He can only sit next to his wife or family member. Remember, it's just his sister. And that's, it's just he, his sister, and his wife. That's everybody else is dead. And he can't sit next to anybody else in the world. And then you, he's got 15 people sitting around. They're all like, hey, buddy, I'll get as far away from you as I can. I'll switch seats. You know what I mean? Where do you want? I want to be in the air. I need to have some sort of air going on. By the way, I got an extra speed stick. Are you into it? Bye, men. And he's wearing it now. Everybody's happy. You know, we get there. Switch flights, switch seats. Everybody's good. But no, flight attendant, pilot, racial discrimination, religious discrimination. I gotta, I gotta get this lady on the line. I gotta find out. Hold on. I'm sorry. JetBlue? Uh, yes, JetBlue is customer service. Yes, this is Carolyn from customer service. Yeah, no, I was looking to see if I could speak to the general of operations. Sure can. Who may I say yes, call Mark Inspires. Okay, I'm about to faint. Did you say this is Mark Inspires? Because uh, I'm a huge well, fan. You say it was Carolyn? Sure is. <laughs> Carolyn, I... I didn't know you were such a huge fan. Well, I am. It's a pleasure to have you on, Carolyn. Uh, but, you know, we're here. We're, doing, we're live on the air right now. I'm trying to see if I can get the general of operations on the line talk about this. I, we're, we're doing the story here about the Orthodox man came on the plane smelling like India, and he had to sit next to his wife. Oh, yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah, I know. Calcutta. Let me get him uh, on the Yeah, I'll wait. Thank you, Carolyn. I'll be in the chat. Well, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you in the chat. Guys, Carolyn's coming in right now. <laughs> get ready for right. me. Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. Jeff Blow. Uh, yes. Uh, who is this? I'm sorry. This is Jim. Jim. <laughs> Jim, how are you? This is Mark Pyers. I'm the host of the longest running daily variety show on YouTube. It's called Mark Inspires. This is Mark Inspires? <laughs> yeah. Love it. You're a fan too? You gotta be kidding me, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're doing it. And you're there. Are you in the chat right now? I'm in here. Gosh, oh, guys, you see Jim in there? He said he's hanging out. Jim, don't be a lurker. All right. I like lurking. Don't be a lurker. You gotta be a part of the chat. So let's get into it, Jim. I, I mean, obviously you hear what we're talking about here. Uh, what's the story with the Orthodox man? And why didn't you guys just let him change the seat? 
<laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Uh -huh. Religious discrimination? Yeah, that's what I said. It's probably a discrimination deal. So she's, did you fire her? <laughs> no, she was rep. Jim, you can't just do a pat on the, the, the back on that one and say, do better next time. <laughs> that's one where you make an example out of her. We are service first. If a passenger wants to switch seats, Regardless of how bad he smells, you let him switch the seat. If others are willing to get the hell away and switch seats with him, you know? You bring up a good point. Jim, look, I'm, that should be part of your protocols going forward. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out here. You know, trying to keep you out of court, Jim. Trying to keep you out of court. That was really good. Yeah, no, Jim, look. You should work for us. If you want to hire me on retainer to give you guys advice at JetBlue on how to do it right, you know, that's what we do here, is just provide you with valuable information. You want me to PayPal you? Yeah, you, you know the PayPal. Send it over. We'll put you next to the CEO. No, I'm good with that. Jim, absolutely. I'll, I'll take an office here next to the CEO. You want to put me next to the CEO? I'll do it. Look, I heard the passengers passed out when he lifted up his arms. Is that true? That has not been confirmed. <laughs> Jim, we're, we're, we're going with it. But people I, might get offended. No, it's called stereotypical comedy. What are you talking about, Jim? If you can't make comedy, then I got to question you. I gotta question you. By the way, it's not stereotypical. It's factual. Have you ever walked down the street, Brooklyn? I have done that. Right? You're there and you're like, what the fuck is that? Am I in Calcutta? She did say he smelled like Calcutta. Yeah, Jim, I know. That's what the uh, attendant told you and that's why she made the decision she made. You know what, Jim? You guys have to deal with that now in court. But I'm in the chat. Yeah, no, everybody's in the chat waiting for you to start talking. I think Stop, I may be yeah, blocked. I don't think you're blocked. Did you guys block Jim? He says he's trying to talk in the chat and you guys aren't, aren't either not seeing it or something. Jim, you know what? Keep trying. Maybe you should get another alias. <laughs> Do JetBlue guy, you know? Oh, JetBlue guy, Jim. JetBlue Jim. We got you, Jim. Bring it in as JetBlue Jim. Then I'll know it's you every time. I won't have to say, oh, who are you, Jim? Good idea. All right, now, Jim, I got to go now. Now we're getting into the weeds. You want to roll one up with me? No, you could smoke that. I'm here. I'm doing the show. <laughs> All right, Jim. Do they know that at JetBlue that you're... And never mind. We'll leave that part out, Jim. Just you do you. <laughs> Wait, can we erase that part? No, you can't erase this now. This is, I mean, I'm live. Are you kidding? Oh, can you erase this part about me doing smoking it out, you know, smoke dog style? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you can't. You're in it. You're in it now. When you get reprimanded from JetBlue, JetBlue brings you in front of the board. Uh, excuse me, Jim, were you rolling it out? Were you on the phone with Mark and Spires rolling it out? Yeah, okay. Um, you're suspended from general operations, you know, for six weeks. And then there's no pay either. No pay? That's on you, Jim. But I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah, next time, I mean, I know you're like, oh, I'll say whatever. I'm on air. I want to be cool. Sometimes you don't have to be cool, Jim. Sometimes you just have to be honest. It was just a joke. Yeah. We'll see you later. Love yeah, you. I love you too. Gosh almighty. You know, Jim. You guys know Jim. He's awesome. He's in the chat. Oh, goodness. You know, guys, when you're doing a story and all of a sudden the Orthodox man comes in. Now, this is like, I can't even, this is just comedy. I want to just be very clear. This is straight up comedy. There is no such thing as a line when you're talking about stereotypes and it's something like this comes up. It is when you make comedy. So I don't want to hear someone saying, oh, there's hatred or some sort of uh, anything, because it's not. This is a total joke comedy, live comedy news show. There is no one intended to ever be offended. Uh, I feel bad for this guy. I think that he should have gotten the ticket that he, I mean, he just should have gotten a seat for he and his wife to sit in, because he's got a religious need, you know? And it's not a difficult thing unless you can't find somebody to switch seats with you. But he had plenty of options. People were willing to switch seats with them. And they didn't want that to happen for some reason. And I think that that's wrong. And I think JetBlue should suffer for it in some, some capacity, whether it's with a, you know, a, a legal battle, whatever it is, but they owe these people for the inconvenience side of things. But how about the fact that they didn't even put them up in a hotel room for the night? They made them fly the next day. Like, that's crazy. This is what we're dealing with. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like on the way out the door. Leave a comment and share. I'm live at 9 a.m. and after 9 p.m., so join us. This is the Mark Inspire Show.